You ask more questions, so I give more answers. Alexei Danilenko. I hope that's correct. Hello. Thanks for that little series. I finally got some time to watch them. I really enjoy your way of teaching shakwachi. It's something that was missing from the internet for me. I wonder if you could expand on how to play Kan, since for me, as a beginner, it's quite a challenge. And I think you can explain it better than anyone. Oh. <laughs> However, all of your vids are great and I'm happy you're here with us on YouTube. Keep it up. Thank you very much. I'm glad you like the videos and they are useful for you. By now I made a video on playing Kan, as you maybe already saw. The basics of playing Kan on the Shakuhachi are not that difficult to understand. It just means that you have to produce a faster airstream. But instead of making the airstream faster by blowing harder, so just pushing out more air, or by making the mouth smaller by using your lip muscles, so something like that. I'm suggesting that you use your chin. By that you can make the embouchure smaller as well. Basically this looks a bit like this. Omate-sama. Great comparison, Marcus. Personally, I recommend the Hoshi Arashi. It may be just a bit heavier than the other flutes, but its tone is unmatched by the other ones. The Utaguchi is really comfortable and it felt easier to get adapted to and getting a good sound and an eloquent furi technique than any other flute. I play Honkyoku mainly. So this is a comment about the video that I made for the beginner shakuhachi that I made not from bamboo but from other materials and because of that are cheaper and I mainly discussed the Shakuhachi U, the Hoshi Arashi, a PVC Shakuhachi and the Bell Shakuhachi. And you seem to like the Hoshi Arashi the best. That's fantastic. I'm very happy for you that you found the flute that works very well for you. Um, as I said in the video, there is not really that much of a difference between all these flutes. And if you like the really loud tone, the clean tone that you have on the Hoshi Arashi, that's great. I hope you make good progress on your Shakuhachi journey. Dylan Snyder. I commented on your previous plastic Shakuhachi reviews and decided to buy a simple PVC flute from an experienced maker of bamboo Shakuhachi and Native American flutes. It was cheap, $25, and plays well for learning. About three months in, I have learned to sound the five notes in tune, and I'm working on the higher can pitches, mostly in vain as of yet. I was tempted to buy a cheap bamboo flute, but decided against it. I think I'll learn for about a year on the PVC, learn general technique and get some songs under my belt and save up 1500 or so in the meantime to buy a proper bamboo flute from Japan. Thank you for your videos, they definitely helped me make an informed decision. So that's another comment on the video I made for the beginner's instruments and it's fantastic to hear that you felt you made the right choice, that I gave you some information that was useful. I'm really happy to hear that. Um, for the PVC Shakuhachi, just because you mentioned you have maybe a bit of difficulty playing Kan, that's one of the reasons why I usually recommend the Shakuhachi U, because there it's a bit easier to play the higher registers. It's not much of a difference, but when you start out, you take everything that you can get in terms of help. I think it's a really good plan to buy a PVC Shakuhachi, in particular if you have the feeling that you might be wanting to get a bit more seriously into Shakuhachi, because they are actually quite a bit cheaper and so so you can save a bit more money and maybe get a bit earlier to a proper bamboo shakuhachi. Measure believe. Which tuner app are you using, please? This is about the video where I went through a cheap bamboo shakuhachi and looked at how the tuning on that flute is. And the app that I use there is called Instuner. Um, I can link it down in the description. There is a free version of that as well. It's actually a good app to use for shakuhachi because not all tuning apps work well with shakuhachi, which has to do with the fact that the fundamental frequency of the shakuhachi often is quieter than the first harmonic. And so this makes it a bit difficult sometimes for these uh, applications to pick up the bass pitch. If that's of interest to you to get a tuning up, maybe look at that. Lin A. Could you make a video about how to play the first song? Thank you for your videos. So far I have not made a video on playing songs. So I made a few videos for play alongs where I basically just play the song and you can play along to me playing, which I hope is useful for getting your first songs under your belt as well. I've not really made a video yet on explicitly going through a song bit by bit and explaining everything because 
It's actually a bit tricky. Um, people come to Shakuhachi from very different backgrounds. So finding a common level from which to start is a bit tricky. That means I would have to explain quite a lot of things, go into many details, have a lot of explanations. And so the video I think would get quite long and probably also a bit boring. That's why I have not really done that so far. But of course, maybe if you have a good idea of a song that you would like me to make a video on, just mention it and I'll seriously consider it. If you've not done so, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. Please leave a comment. As you can see, I read them and I answer them. Futuro Expat. Great lesson for Khan delivered with a sublime sense of humor. Thank you. Futuro Expat seems to like the video. Thank you for that. As of my sense of humor, because <laughs> it's a frequent comment. Um, yeah, I like to make jokes. That's very true. Um, and I think people who watch the videos like the jokes that I make, so I'm all good with that. Um, I always have to think about one thing that Yokoyama sensei has said, which is that playing shakuhachi is a matter of life and death. And I just want to make clear that for me, shakuhachi playing is actually a very serious activity. So I put a lot of effort, I put a lot of energy and time into playing shakuhachi and doing it as well as I can. But at the same time, I feel if you really pour yourself into an activity like that, you have to keep a certain distance from it so that it doesn't become all consuming. And all these jokes that I make are really just a mechanism to um, put a bit of distance between me and the shakuhachi playing. Plus, of course, I also just like to crack jokes. And as long as they don't get on your nerves or distract you from playing shakuhachi and doing the practice and doing the work, that's all good. I'm glad you enjoy them. Sue Hamilton, I received a cloth to clean the shakuhachi. How often do you do that? There's also now a video on instrument care on the channel where I go through the details about how to look after a shakuhachi. There is not really a lot you have to do for caring for the shakuhachi, except being a bit careful that it doesn't dry out too much, that you don't damage the blowing edge. Those are the two main things. As for how often to clean your instrument, basically you should just clean it after your practice session or after a performance, because one of the main factors that contributes to a shakuhachi cracking is that the humidity inside the tube and outside the tube are different. And so you basically want to keep these two humidity levels as equal as possible. So that is why it's a good practice, that it's why it's a very good habit to just clean the flute once you're done playing. Amber W28, the Joanna edits had me rolling. Hey, Joanna. Jo jo Joanna. <laughs> yeah, we had quite some fun. Uh, my niece Joanna and I... There you go making the video on how to get your first tone out of the instrument. And luckily, um, she is up for some jokes and her name is very thankful in that respect that it's easy to find some clips. Nishan Mutka. Sorry, I hope I get your names right. Uh, if I mispronounce anything, don't be too hard on me, please. Um, by the way, can you make a video about different scales of shakuhachi? Like what scale it obeys and how many octaves come in shakuhachi? Also, what is the criterion for a well-tuned shakuhachi? Does it even exist? Or the out of tuneness of the shakuhachi is a traditional flavor? <laughs> out of tuneness, that's a really good word. <laughs> I definitely need to integrate that into my vocabulary. To be honest, to learn shakuhachi, you don't really need to know that much about scales. Of course, it's very useful um, to know your way around scales, in particular if you do something like improvising or playing along to music. But overall, it's not really one of the top priorities for shakuhachi. It's different for instruments like the piano or for the violin. But for the shakuhachi, you can come quite a long way without knowing too much about it. Regarding the out of tuneness or what a well-tuned shakuhachi is, that's really quite a difficult subject. Even for very well-made instruments, even for professional level instruments, you have some notes that are not 100% on the Western scale. So, for example, if I play these notes here, Maybe you heard that the second note that I played, which is the tsu on the shakuhachi, on this shakuhachi, the note actually was a bit flat. And the reason for that is that the shakuhachi maker consciously made a decision to make this note a bit lower to make it easy to play the low tsumeri pitches that you have. And if this note is just a tiny bit flat, it makes it a lot easier to get these low notes. This 
On the other hand, means that when I play and I really need to be in tune, I always have to play a bit on the cutty side. I always have to correct a bit for the tzu when I play the tzu. So is this in tune? Is this out of tune? I don't know. If you compare it to a piano, of course it's out of tune. But for a shakuhachi, I would still say this is a fantastically well-tuned instrument. On shakuhachi, you can always compensate if the tuning of the instrument is not perfect. You can always go a bit cutty, you can always go a bit merry. You can't do that, again, on a piano because you just press the key and the pitch is fixed. On a shakuhachi, you can change the pitch. But of course, you don't want to fight the instrument, so to speak. And so this is why when I talked about the beginner's instrument, I said um, that you really should look out for an instrument that is well-tuned so that you don't have to fight against the instrument or that you don't have to work on compensating these very idiosyncratic pitches of the instrument constantly. Okay, so there I would draw the boundary and say this is not a well-tuned instrument. But for Shakuhachi, this is a bit of a gray area. Artist Penguin. Thank you for this. I bought Shakuhachi on a whim and I'm trying to learn it by myself. It's very frustrating. Hmm. You and John Kippers' channels are way too underappreciated, but every view is by a person who is passionate about the content. Thank you. Well, of course, I think my channel is underappreciated. As every musician, I think I am underappreciated. I don't know about John, um, but seriously, thank you for that. Um, that is very encouraging. I'm very happy that you found these videos useful on your shakuhachi journey. Part of your frustration probably is that you're trying to do it on your own. And that is just tricky, especially if you're starting out. So if you know anybody who plays shakuhachi, if you just came across it by accident, maybe you don't know anybody, so maybe it's a bit difficult finding anybody. But it really pays off. It really, really pays off um, presenting your playing to somebody else who knows how to play the instrument and just getting some tips, just getting some feedback. It really will propel your shakuhachi playing forward very fast. Nicholas Quarforth, when did you start to play shakuhachi? <laughs> Funny you should mention this. Uh, I bought my first Chakuhachi on the 1st of August in 2012. So it's almost exactly 10 years from now. Um, and yes, probably there will be a video. Of course, I have to make a video for that, I think. But it's almost 10 years that I started playing. Dean Raffaelli. I bought my first Chakuhachi in 1978. Thankfully, I learned to read the music with a young mind, even though I did not begin to study in earnest until a decade ago. Despite years of playing, every score presents new challenges. Challenges. Thanks for the great description. I can only agree 100% shakuhachi notation is a big mess. There is no standard. Everybody does it in his or her own way. Even within shakuhachi schools, there are differences. So every shakuhachi player always adds a bit of notation idiosyncrasies to a score. And this is just because shakuhachi notation is not seen as a thing in itself. It's always just a memory aid. So compared to Western music, there is quite a different view. But it definitely helps to learn it with a young mind, as you say. I completely agree. <laughs> Banzan. Great video and useful for me as a Tozan school player to learn more about KSK notation, which seems to be somewhere in between traditional Kinko and Tozan notations. By the way, in Tozan we say O Meri with a long O, not Dai Meri. I'm not sure it's really in between. So for example, the rhythm notation is just 100% Kinko school. And that is one of the things that creates the most problems I find for reading shakuhachi notation. Um, so KSK notation is mostly really kinko notation in my view, um, but there are some things that were changed and there are some influences from Tozan, no doubt about that, um, on how certain symbols are being used. As for Omeri or Daimeri, I think in the video I just used the one um, to be a bit more consistent with the other terms that are used in the videos. Apart from that, we really use these two terms interchangeably. Maybe, I don't know, maybe spontaneously I would actually do say Daimeri, but Umeri is really just the same for us. Thanks for all your questions. If you have not done so, please subscribe to the channel. Please leave me a comment. As you see, I read them and I answer them. Please ring the bell so you're notified for any new video. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. But every, but every, but every view. Hello, today, Q and...